The rules have changed. Washington DC will have a new and revamped Dark Zone, or should I say Dark Zones. Features like server capacity, gear normalization, checkpoint turns and VoIP have been changed to counter problems from the first game. Other than that there are new rogue mechanics and the Dark Zone perk system allowing you to PvP in a different way. Enter the Thief Dance for awesome loot and receive amazing rewards for going on a manhunt. Let's see what changes the developers made and how it affects the game. Before I start. I want to thank Joe from NGN Gaming for allowing me to use his footage. He got the chance to fly to Massive Entertainment's headquarters and record footage of the game, including the Dark Zone. He uploaded videos to his own YouTube channel which you can find linked in the description. Where New York had one large Dark Zone, Washington DC greenlit three smaller Dark Zones. For players that don't know what the Dark Zone entails, it's a lawless area that the government has given up and had been taken over by the most dangerous factions but also holds the most rewarding loot. It's high risk, high reward. The Dark Zones allow for both PvE and PvP combat since player can also go rogue. More on that in a second. Washington DC is divided into different neighborhoods. In the corners of the city we can find three Dark Zones. Dark Zone West, Dark Zone South and Dark Zone East. As they're now smaller, in size they roughly compare to two or three areas of the Manhattan Dark Zone, each one has their own atmosphere and environment, and caters to a different playstyle. Dark Zone West, located in Georgetown, is split in two by a large canal and characterized by medium range engagements and features European style architecture. Dark Zone South, located at the waterfront, is the smallest of the Dark Zones and places emphasis on close quarters combat. Sidelines are easily broken with large interiors and choke points. Dark Zone East, located in Capital Station, is the largest of the three Dark Zones. Players can utilize long sidelines in overgrown governmental parks, creating a swamp-like atmosphere. But that's not the only thing that has changed, not even a little bit. The three Dark Zones have changed to the following new features. Extractions, landmarks and dynamic events, server capacity and matchmaking, gear normalization, checkpoint turrets, the new VoIP system, friendly fire, the occupied dark zone which changes up all the features I just mentioned, and other than that there are new rogue mechanics, which we'll get into later in the video. And also there's now a dark zone perk system. Let's start with the extractions, landmarks and dynamic events, since this is the content of the dark zone. The idea behind the dark zone is high risk, high reward, as there are many things to do and much loot to collect. Landmarks are returning where hostile NPCs, always including a named enemy, are taking control of an area. You can clear this area, kill the named enemy and collect all the loot. This time around they come in normal and hard difficulty for solo and group members. It's a dynamic world, constantly dropping Dark Zone supply drops with loot and chests scattered around. Besides opening them for your group, you can now also steal the contents, rewarding you with more rewards and leaving your group members in the dust. This will mark your rogue, but we'll get to that later. Besides this, there are areas called catacombs, which seem to represent some sort of dynamic event, although it's unsure what they actually are. The rarer and more scarce loot you gather from the methods above is contaminated and must be extracted from pre-designated locations. A helicopter will fly over to collect your loot, bring it back to the base of operations and decontaminate it so you can later use or sell it. The weapons and gear you extract will roll at your power level. There is a risk to this however, as you need to call in the extraction and you have to wait for 90 seconds or so before the helicopter arrives. In the meantime other players can easily kill you or steal your loot leaving you with nothing. However for the first time you can now also extract non-contaminated loot, evening the amount of loot you lose. Another change is the server capacity. Besides the playable area of the dark zones being smaller, the server capacity has also been decreased from 24 to 12 players. The developers partially decided this because the playable area is smaller, but also because Manons had no way of surviving against the server with up to 23 other players. Depending on your level, you will be placed in one of three brackets, level 1 to 10, level 11 to 20, and level 21 to 30. This to keep the playing field balanced. Once you reach world tier, all players who have reached that are matched together. On top of that, solo players can select solo queuing to get a better chance of avoiding groups. However, this isn't set in stone as people can still form groups in the dark zone. Another feature they implemented is gear normalization, which we know from Last Stand and Skirming. 
To create a fair environment, Massive implemented gear normalization, which maximizes the stats on your gear and weapons when you're in the dark zone. This counts the fact that one player that has grinded for the best gear and weapons can easily overpower another. Even as a mostly PvE player, I'm not that interested in a system like this. Grinding and optimizing your gear to be at your best in the dark zone is what the game is about for most players. But as we'll talk about the occupied dark zone, we'll see that this isn't permanent. Another problem that was encountered, one that has been talked a lot about on the forums, is spawn camping. Groups of stronger players would camp entrances to the dark zone to instantly kill the players coming out. Not anymore. Each entrance now has two turrets guarding it, shooting any rogue players that come within a certain range. These turrets will shock you when you're hit and can eliminate you within two to three bullets, something like that, and they are also indestructible. Personally, I like this feature as a mostly PvE player, like I mentioned, but I think the shock effect and high damage should maybe be removed or altered, more so that the turrets are support for the vulnerable players and not an escape. Those who played the Dark Zone know that it's a host for toxicity, and I'm not talking about the contaminated areas. Other players would often be toxic through voice chat, believe me, we all experienced it, and if you don't believe me, you can watch Marcus Dahl's video on it. To counter this, the developers made changes to the VoIP. If you like me and didn't know what this is or was, VoIP is an abbreviation of Voice Over Internet Protocol, basically meaning you can talk to everyone in the server, or in this case, in a certain range within the Dark Zone. In the Division this was always turned on, although you could turn this off yourself. In the Division 2 this remains the same until you go rogue. Once you go rogue you switch VoIP channels where you can only talk to your group members. Many PvP players don't like this change as talking to your opponents and random players is part of the fun. The argument they presented is that if you don't like it you can simply turn VoIP off and I agree with that, although I don't care too much about this feature anyway. Rogue 2.0 in the Division deleted the feature that allowed you to shoot at friendly players when you're not rogue. This was to prevent accidental rogue status and to prevent getting the drop on someone. In the Division 2 this is still the same, however there is an exception which we'll get to now. Those of you who are really interested in the hardcore Dark Zone experience might be disappointed so far, but don't be disappointed yet. The Occupied Dark Zone changes all the rules above. On a timed cycle, one of the three Dark Zones will turn into an Occupied Dark Zone, and this will rotate every so often. This Dark Zone disables gear normalization, checkpoint turrets and friendly fire. On top of that, the loot that will drop in that specific Dark Zone is of higher value, making it even more rewarding. Truly endgame material. The only thing that will remain the same is the VoIP. This I like. A lot because you can still decide to go to the normal dark zone or you can decide to go for hardcore experience and go to the occupied dark zone. The feature everyone is most interested in is the rogue system. This time around going rogue works a little bit different. There are three ranks, each one increasing your threat and options. We have rogue, disavowed rogue and manhunt. The first, rogue, is triggered by non-lethal actions. Toggling the rogue button or stealing the loot from a chest or dark zone supply drop will mark you as rogue, although it will not mark you on the map. You can still be eliminated by other players, but you don't lose as much XP and credits. Only when triggered rogue, you can enter the thieves then. To do this, you need to triangulate the position of the safe room by hacking several shade networks across the dark zone. If successful, you can enter the safe room, instantly removing your rogue status. On top of that, you can buy rarer gear at the vendor and collect shock ammo from the refill box. The shock ammo can be used to stun NPCs and other players for 3 seconds, meaning you can easily use it to kill them. And if the PvP players have anything to say about it, it will probably be patched or removed. The second rank, Disavowed Rogue, is triggered by engaging or eliminating other Division Agents, allowing you to gain XP and steal their loot. This comes at the risk of you being flagged Rogue on the map, putting a bullseye on your back. The third and final rank, Manhunt, you will reach upon eliminating 5 Division Agents, at the minimum. Every agent in the Dark Zone will be alerted and the bounty on your head increases. Across the map, 3 terminals will pop up, where you can perform 2 actions. Activate the terminal to buy off your manhunt status, rewarding you with loot, credits and XP, or you can disable it. The latter leaves you with two stations, but it increases the reward you get if you manage to buy your manhunt status off at the other terminals. 
The final change is the new Dark Zone perk system. The base of operations now has a Dark Zone operator. He or she grants you access to the new Dark Zone interface. A tree of bonuses that unlock every 5 Dark Zone levels. These perks don't increase your lethality per se, but your Dark Zone experience based on your playstyle. Thinking of extra space for contaminated items, increased rewards for rogue agents, or additional opportunities for loot. It gives the Dark Zone leveling system a purpose, and going rogue now comes with an extra risk of losing your levels and in turn your perks. To summarize, three smaller Dark Zone with landmarks to clear and supply drops to gather. Servers now hold a maximum of 12 players with the option to solo queue. No friendly fire, gear normalization, no VoIP as rogues and checkpoint turrets except when you're in the occupied Dark Zone. The rogue system now has three ranks based on the levels of your crime. Rogue for non-lethal actions allowing you to collect shock ammo and enter the thieves den for better rewards. Disavowed rogue upon killing division agents and manhunt after killing at least 5 agents allowing you to buy off your status in return for greater rewards. Finally you now have dark zone perks adding purpose to the dark zone leveling system and more risk to going rogue. Those are a lot of changes, some of which I think are good and others not that good. Overall I'm happy with how it turned out, but there's definitely some things to improve. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the Dark Zone breakdown, I would like to ask you to like or dislike if you didn't like it. Share, subscribe and click the notification bell to become part of the Mars Minds HD community and of course the notification squad. On top of that you can follow me on Twitter for daily updates and join my Discord if you're looking for an engaged community that revolves around Tom Clancy's Division 1 and 2. Both links are in the description. Visit my Patreon page through the links in the description if you're interested in exclusive content with the summarized information from my videos. Sometimes these are weapon blueprints, gear blueprints or infographic stories. To end the video I have a question for you. What of the Dark Zone features would you want to keep, change or remove? Leave your answer in the comment section down below and I'll make sure to get back to you. I'll talk to you in the next video on Discord or on Twitter. Peace out.